Hi there, I'm Ira Cohen from Anadoc and I'm going to talk about AI and machine learning, specifically the relationship between these two terms. This should help clear up the confusion about the meanings of them and how they're being used. It turns out 40% of European startups claim to use AI, but are actually exaggerating their capabilities. So what is really AI? Well, to answer that, let's take a step back and review the evolution of our AI and where we are today. When people think about AI, they typically think about the Terminator or the Matrix uh, and thinking about conscious entities that can rival human capabilities or even exceed them. Well, this type of AI is known as artificial general intelligence. This is the holy grail of AI research. We're not there now. And the AI we actually use today and are exposed to on an everyday basis is known as narrow AI or weak AI. Well, this type of AI excels at one single specific task. For example, automatic photo tagging, speech recognition applications like Siri or Alexa that can understand basic user requests, or even in driverless cars, autonomous cars, AI, narrow AI is going to be the prevalent AI being used can do an individual task much faster than any human, a lot of times more accurately than humans, uh, but it's only doing what it's trained to do. Now, let's discuss how these systems are able to perform these tasks. How do we actually get to narrow AI? Well, until the last decade, more or less, most AI systems were automation systems designed by experts with hard-coded expert rules. So what is that? Think about a manufacturing plan with a robot that from the old days that does a specific task automated call center, autopilot in an airplane. All these systems follow a prescribed set of rules that were designed by experts uh, to deliver consistent results. And these expert systems, the problem with them, they're very hard to build. Uh, they're very hard to maintain. And for many years, there hasn't been a lot of money uh, in research uh, for developing AI for those reasons exactly. Well, this all changed in the last decade. Uh, with, a break, with significant breakthroughs in machine learning. Well, what is machine learning? Well, machine learning is a subfield of AI where algorithms are trained to perform a task using data. It has been around since the 50s, so it's not a new field, but it, had, uh, it has been various commercial applications of it throughout the years, uh, some in Amazon recommendations, some in Google, some in manufacturing, uh, and even if you remember the Microsoft Office Clippy thing, that was using machine learning to train how its behavior. Most applications of machine learning were limited in, and the field was mostly in academic research. This all changed at around 2007 with the rise of what is known today as deep learning. Now, when deep learning became the new thing, machine learning became the main go-to method to implement narrow AI. So let's review what really happened. What were the breakthroughs? The first breakthrough was an algorithmic one. Well, what happened in a seminal paper from a group of researchers led by Jeffrey Hinton, Joshua Benjo, and Jan LeCun, they actually show how to train a neural network, a deep multi-layer neural network, and they coined the phrase deep learning. With that came uh, additional uh, revolutions in the form of greater compute power. So companies like Google and Amazon and Microsoft and, and Netflix had designed very large data centers that had a lot of compute power to train these deep learning models. And they also had a lot of data. So think about the amount of data that Google has in YouTube and in photos and it's the same for Microsoft and Amazon and all these other companies. These three elements actually provided the capability to train very deep very large neural network architectures. And what they showed in these initial research papers, and then commercially, that this provided the breakthroughs required in terms of getting machine learning models to perform the tasks of speech recognition, image recognition, photo tagging, video recognition, and many other tasks that were not possible before, uh, or at least the, the accuracy of them was not commercially viable, meaning they were not useful enough uh, to be a product that you would put in your pocket. This renaissance in machine learning, it became the only game in town for applying AI and actually brought back AI to the forefront of both research but also the world. And we hear about the dangers of AI, the ethics of AI, 
so many things that were you could have thought about them before but now because AI is really working and it's really solving real problems and it's all thanks to the breakthroughs in machine learning it is becoming uh, issues that people will handle now another aspect of uh, machine learning and AI that uh, is important the deep learning technology that brought the ability to do a lot more AI in the, in the world is actually bringing back some of the classical machine learning as well to solve problems where that have small amounts of data that people just ignored in the past because there weren't enough machine learning engineers and researchers out there that could do the task and now we're seeing other use cases where machine learning is being applied basically AI with small amounts of data not just based on deep learning architectures so now that we've gone over all the concepts of AI, artificial general intelligence, and narrow AI and machine learning, hopefully that clears up the confusion between the terms. Just remember, what you're seeing today in many of the applications is a narrow AI that is implemented using machine learning, either deep learning algorithms or classical machine learning algorithms. Thank you.